Hello, and welcome to Holistic Lifestyle Tips, Getting Real About the Woo Woo. I am Becky Russell, owner of wellness company Hope Essential, and I am an essential oil educator and a holistic lifestyle educator. I just love to teach. And I also feel obligated to share what I've learned on this journey of over 25 years with the holistic living. Um, it served me well, I believe, because in my family, uh, some of the women, when they were in their 40s, uh, they were diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And when I was in my mid-30s, I was uh, diagnosed with prediabetes. And so I could choose one of two things. I could go down the path they did of, you know, the, the American medicine way of approaching it, which I felt did not lend to a quality of life as you aged, or um, I could try something different. So I chose the holistic route where you're uh, treating the entire body, mind, body, and soul from the inside out. You're not just treating symptoms. I'm not judging anyone for what they choose. That just has worked for me so far um, because I am not on any kind of diabetes medication. And, um, you know, even though I do uh, am challenged with cholesterol issues because of the genetics, um, I treat it holistically whenever possible. That doesn't mean I have no other health issues. I do, but I am always tackling them holistically first and then whenever possible, and then I will look at other, other ways. So um, I just wanted to share what I've learned, open your mind up to another way of thinking about being more proactive and preventative about your health. So every week we uh, talk about a different subject of wellness, whether emotional, physical, or spiritual. And sometimes it's one or two or all three. And tonight we are going to talk about something really timely, Zoom fatigue. And I think that's very appropriate because today I have been pretty much on Zoom the entire day. So um, this is something that I definitely have experienced myself and um, want to sort of share some suggestions on how to, uh, you know, address it. And let's face it, this might be our world for a while. So um, we need to um, do the things that are going to keep us healthy and um, happy. So it may seem crazy to, to think that something so, you know, innocent, I guess, can, can really weigh on you. But I know if I'm on Zoom too much, I start feeling very um, weighed down, very uh, exhausted. And there's a reason behind that. And I, that's what I find fascinating. I want to know why. Why do I feel that way sometimes? And so um, one of the reasons is because we typically rely on, um, you know, with in-person conversations, we have cues that we can see. Um, eye contact, uh, subtle shifts that indicate someone's about to speak, uh, but those things go out the window with the Zoom. And it can be a little uh, unnerving. And so when um, we're missing those nonverbal cues, and that can be very taxing on our brains. And um, one thing I know that I've seen happen quite a bit too is because we don't have those cues, a lot of times we end up talking over each other. Now, obviously that can happen in person too, but we typically can catch ourselves um, and, and back off, but you just don't know on the Zoom call. You just, oh no, you go. Oh no, you go. And it can be a little awkward. And um, there's some other things that make it very um, challenging in that um, I don't know if, uh, you know, a lot of times you don't know what's going on in the person's surroundings. So they may seem very distracted and you don't, you, you might think they're being rude, but actually they've got repair people in the house or kids or pets or something. And so they're being 
pulled away, trying not to appear that way. So it can be a little, a little strange. Um, the other thing is that um, sometimes, you know, we tend to um, multitask and we can almost see a Zoom call as an excuse to multitask because a lot of times the meeting's an hour, that's time you can maybe be cleaning up your email on your phone or something. And that's really not good for you or the other person. You're not giving them your attention. Um, and we have found, it's been proven that multitasking is not a good thing. We should not be doing it. I'm still working on it, but it's been proven it's not a good thing. So um, Zoom is very tempting though. It makes it very tempting to do that. The other maybe point that you may not have thought about is, you know, some, a lot of people before all this, they use Zoom only for, um, you know, family and friends, you know, talking to people that don't live in the area. And, you know, work during the day was more in-person phone calls and so forth. But now because we're on Zoom so much during the day with work, then we're just exhausted and don't feel like making those connections at night with family and friends. So that's a sort of unfortunate thing. And then also, um, I think it's uh, very important um, to realize that uh, it's easy to lose focus, not only because of the multitasking, but um, it's because of that constant gaze. When we're in a conversation in person or in a group setting in person, we can, you know, our gaze can go all over the room. We can, it's just not this sort of fixed gaze into one area. And that's exhausting. I never stopped to think about that. So that was something that was interesting out of this article. And the other thing was, um, Let's see. Oh, that um, there that it's uh, we just can't uh, be getting up, and we don't feel that we can just be getting up and doing, you know, going to go get a cup of coffee or whatever. It almost feels like you're you're tied to that. Um, sitting there in front of that screen and that can sort of cause some resentment or uncomfortableness and but i don't want to make you feel like you know we're doomed and gloom and you know there's only negatives um zoom has been a wonderful thing um you know what if we didn't have it during all this i mean it, it is a necessary vital part of our lives now but if you're feeling any of those things, the awkwardness, the, the exhaustion, those kind of things, um, listen to your body and try to, um, you know, honor how you're feeling so that you don't get burned out and you don't, um, you know, just maybe sink into a depression or something. So here's some tips on how to handle Zoom fatigue. Um, disconnect when you need to. Um, also a big thing, and that's what I'm understanding I need to do, is schedule time between the calls. Don't have them back to back. And that's even with phone calls. It's exhausting. My, I start losing my voice if I don't give myself a break. So um, at least give yourself 15 to 30 minutes, but if you can, between the Zoom calls so that you can move around, you can get a drink, whatever. And then practice mindfulness, meditate, do some yoga, something that will help you stay more grounded, more centered when you're not in front of the screen. And have compassion for yourself and others. Um, if someone's, you know, on a Zoom call and their uh, sound is acting up or they have background noise and they don't realize it. You know, not everyone knows how to use Zoom correctly. I know I had to muddle my way through. So 
you know, just have some empathy and compassion. And establish daily routines in that uh, try to not have your days and nights all run together, your weekend. That's something I'm working on this year to create a, a or step into a different flow um, so that my work week is looks different, feels different than the weekend. Uh, that's a sort of something we can fall into if we love what we do. We tend to not think of it as work, but when we don't have any kind of break, when we're just focused on those same actions every day, that's a recipe for burnout, and, and we don't want that. Uh, another thing you can do, of course, is stop the multitasking. Um, that will help with the focus. And uh, build in the breaks, I mentioned that. Um, and reduce the on-screen stimuli. Um, the one suggestion is to have very... Um, either plain backgrounds or uh, calming ones like a, a beach or something. But if, if it's not a corporate kind of Zoom, you can't control what other people have in their backgrounds. But you can be aware of that on yours. If it's super busy, loud, want, now that you understand how distracting that could be, maybe you'll change your background. And then um, make virtual social events an opt-in kind of thing versus uh, mandatory. And this speaks more to a corporate setting. Um, you just can't expect people to just be on Zoom day and night. And then also think about going old school. There's nothing wrong with, with um, asking someone, hey, I'm a little Zoomed out today. Can we just do a call or, or an email? This isn't gonna take that long. Um, can we do that? And odds are they will probably be relieved. And um, and then avoid video altogether in cases where um, it's someone you don't know that well. Because now if your whole point is to get to know them better, like in a networking situation, um, that is perfectly fine to do the Zoom. But if it's something where you can just answer uh, or get that in an email or a text or a call, or you can begin that relationship building with that and then move to the Zoom, that's going to buy you some time. So I would love to know if, if you found value in this, if you are going to walk away with any aha from this. And um, also, uh, what is, I would love to have you put in the comments, what's the most frustrating thing for you? about Zoom and what's the, the best thing about Zoom because there are so many positives. And uh, don't forget that if you wanna catch up on some other videos of mine, uh, they're on my website, hopeessential.com and uh, you can opt in for my newsletter, you get it monthly and also uh, follow me on Hope Essential LLC on Facebook for my business page and I give you updates on events and all sorts of fun recipes and so forth. So um, would love to have you join me there. So till next time, choose you, choose natural, choose now.